All right, hey, and Jackie's uh, joining us from uh, Marnock, Virginia, right? Did I say that right, Jackie? From Anyways, uh, I don't see anybody else popping in here, or as they do, I will open it up. But uh, Aaron, the floor is yours. Let me turn on sharing. Uh, I don't need sharing. You don't need sharing. Okay. All no, because right. my, my stuff, if you can see me when I talk, my slides come through as my camera. Oh, okay. Okay. The floor is yours, dude. So you can see the intro title right as I'm talking. Yep. You might want to double click on me to make me full screen, but that's up to you. I wouldn't make me full screen. I know what I look like. <laughs> um, escape or double click exit. All right. Go ahead and the floor is yours. We'll see what, what, what you can do. Okay. So. Uh, my name is Aaron Addison. Most of you know me, at least cursorily. I'm a big fat guy with a big bushy beard, looking like a homeless person. Um, this is about Raspberry Pi. Um, and we're going to give you a kind of a very high level introductory to Raspberry Pi. And if anybody has any questions at any point, speak up. Um I, I like questions. It shows that you're not in oil painting. Um, so let's uh, go to my. Slide here. Um. This is my email addresses, Major Friday at Gmail, Major Friday at Proton Mail, and the KF1G at ARRL net that doesn't seem to work anymore. Um, if you have any questions later, feel free to um, uh, reach out to me anytime. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. There are no stupid questions I don't know the answers to. So this is a good recipe for uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, you can screenshot this if you want. Um, but it's also Pushki season, if any of you are into that. And the Raspberry Pushkis are pretty good. Um, so we're going to talk about what they are, what you can do with them, and what they're not really good for. Raspberry Pis are a cheap single board computer. And I need to move some stuff around on my screen. So a Raspberry Pi is a cheap single board computer. And they're usually less than $100 unless you buy them from effectively scalpers on Amazon. Um, what a single board computer means is everything is contained on one circuit board. You, there's no slot to add memory or a video card or anything like that. And they're about the size of a credit card, although like 15 credit cards stacked on top of each other, but the space of a credit card. There are lots of models of Raspberry Pis. The first one was the Raspberry Pi Model B. Then the Model A came out. I don't know why the Model B came out before the Model A, but it did. Then there's the B plus, the Pi 2, 3, 3B, 3B plus, and then 3A came out substantially after that. They're all slightly different, um, usually how fast they are. Then the Raspberry Pi 4B came out. And then the Pi 400, which is different in a lot of ways, and then the Pi 5 has ju just come out very recently. And they're having supply chain issues, getting enough of them out to the public. And then there's the Pi 0 and the Pi 0 2 and the Pi Pico. Now, we're not really going to talk about the Pi Pico, 
much. Um, I'm going to switch to. So this is a Pi Pico. It's made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which is why it's called a Raspberry Pi. But it is not a computer, really. It's an Arduino. So um, I think you guys have already had some sessions about Arduinos. This one is really nice because it is USB-C on the end. Um, and it is so much faster than most Arduinos out there on the market. Um, you can actually make really nice interfaces and not have them be pokey and have them work really well. Um, but the interesting thing is because the only part of that that's really important is a little chip on the back. This is also a Raspberry Pi Pico, also USB-C powered. And uh, you can lose this anywhere. Um, and it has little buttons on it to reset it and program it and lots of interface pads. And th these are really nice for little embedded designs, little things that you want to do. Um, that you don't want a whole computer for. Wikipedia. I normally don't like to sell Wikipedia, um, but Wikipedia has a great article on the Raspberry Pis. It goes on forever with all the stats and, I mean, models and somebody put a lot of care and work into this. Um, so I, I do highly recommend it if you want like more detailed information. And then there are the clones. It's kind of like Star Wars, Attack of the Clones. There's the orange pie, the nano pie, the lemon pie, the latte panda, which I don't know how that ends in pie, but there are probably a hundred different um, makers of now the single board computers that do what the Raspberry Pi does. They're all a little different. They are a little weirder or sometimes cheaper, sometimes more expensive, sometimes more featured. Um, so you don't have to go with a Raspberry Pi. There are lots of options. And so here's one that came out the other day. So it's a tiny $30 computer that has USB and, and et cetera, but two network cards, which is not something Raspberry Pis don't have normally. So you can make your own firewall or router with a little tiny thing that consumes about eight watts while it's sitting there. Um, so if you need a little firewall, these kind of things work great. And then there's the Orange Pi Zero uh, LTS. LTS stands for long-term support. They promise to make this model available for 15 years. Um, if you can see the bottom of the screen, it is less than two inches by two inches. And it can run Android if you wanted it to. You know, these kinds of things make great embedded displays for signage. It's what a lot of people are using for embedded displays for signage. What can you do with them? Well, anything you can do with a computer that honestly, is about 10 years old. Uh, the Raspberry Pis are not blistering speed. Um, they're fast enough to be usable, but I wouldn't want one as my daily driver. They do make great media stations. Uh, uh, great. Um, there's a nice package that lets you host your own version of Wikipedia for when the world ends. Um, Lots of things that you can do with them. They are, however, Linux, which means they won't run a lot of, well, some um, 
ham radio specific software. So you cannot run ham radio deluxe on it. It's just not going to work. It's not a thing. The architecture of the processors is different. They're not compatible with the same code. Now, that said, because Microsoft likes to, to do things, Microsoft has come out with Windows on ARM, which is the processor type that Raspberry Pis use. And it lets you run Windows with the Windows GUI, as well as a lot of normal apps that you would download your your uh log for old man you, um everything all those things can actually run on it but because it has this intermediary layer of translating it to windows it really is pretty slow i'm looking forward to getting my first raspberry pi 5 and i'll see how well it works on that um Okay, and that's, and now we switch back to the camera. So, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's called the Zero, cause even though it came out way after all of the other Raspberry Pis, pretty much. Because it's so small. It is a stick of gum sized computer. And it's got a case on it here, which adds a lot of size, bulk to it. But um, this is actually one of my favorite ones because it's so small that you can do lots of things with this. And this will just consume like three watts when it's running. It's ridiculous how little power it uses. Um, this is a Raspberry Pi 3. And so you can see sort of the size difference. This is a screen that I bought separately for, I don't know, $12 or something like that, that lets it have a little screen just sitting there if you wanted to have a like a little status panel or something like that. Get rid of these. And then this, look inside. Whoops. Is a Raspberry Pi 4. Oh, I lost my focus. There we go. Um, with a little display that I got on, um, a little, you know, inside a case that I got on uh, Amazon that now make it fit again. And so this has a little, you know, clip this. It has a little display that is a touchscreen display. Um, the touchscreen was about 70 bucks. And the little case that turns it into a, a nice, like, kiosk that you would do, um, that you would use, like, when you're buying a burrito. Uh, was maybe 20 bucks. Let's see if I can not have the glare. So you may have noticed I'm powering this from a little phone charger. Um, and it's running pretty happily. Um, there we go. So that was how long it took to boot. You can think about that in terms of how long it takes, like your desktop to boot. 
you all got to see that. Um, and so it has a, you know, like I said, it's a touch screen. And um, one of the things that I think is really interesting, um, if people have been to what used to be called the Boxborough Ham Fest, and I still call it the Boxborough Ham Fest, um, Andy does a thing on Andy's Linux every year. And he has a specialized package of Linux that he uses that has a bunch of ham radio friendly programs in there. Okay. Um, so Larry asks, how much RAM and storage does it have? Oh, and I apparently I missed some, maybe some other questions. Um, so this has eight, eight gigs of RAM. Um, And um, I don't actually remember how much storage it has. Probably 64 gigs. Um, it uses a micro SD card for its storage. Um, so you can give it as much storage as you want. They make terabyte micro SD cards now. If you wanted it to store a lot of movies or something, you could. Um, without it working real hard, it, and you and it has uh, four USB ports. I went black real fast. There we go. So you can plug a external hard drive in, like a USB hard drive, and have even more um, storage if you want. Like if you really want to. Um, and there are packages out there that let you build your own network attached storage. So if you want to do backups, you can actually use a Raspberry Pi and it comes with a nice interface and you can mount Windows shares on it and, and save files and do um, lots and lots of things that way. Um, it makes it pretty nice. But one of the, I'm, I'm not using the right keyboard. <laughs> um, but so this is the package manager. This is where you add and remove software. So if I click on communication, so you can actually see, and this come, this is the way it comes straight from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I didn't customize this at all. So you can receive faxes with your radio and sound card. Um, use uh, software to find radio, Morse code training program, uh, a digipeter for APRS. I'm shaking too much. A digipeter for APRS. Um, uh, the keyboard's not working right. Um, a console-based uh, ham radio logger. There's lots of log tools in here. Um, ham radio VHF UHF contest log. There are tons of ham radio software on here. And to kind of demonstrate that, if I go up here to what I've actually installed, there's actually a menu choice for ham radio. And I just installed all of these right from the menu, right as it comes straight from the factory, basically. Um, chirp for programming your radio. Um, a logging program, FL Digi, the whole suite of FL Digi. Um, G Rig, which is a nice little rig control software. JS8 Call. Uh, and if I was to scroll down, there would be um, uh, WSJTX is on here. And so George has asked what hammer application applications am I using with the Pi? 
So um, I use a logger with the pie called uh, Hammers uh, for Poda. Uh, um, I use FL Digi on it. And I have used, although I don't use it as much now, uh, a program called PAT, uh, which is a WinLink program um, that I actually put that on my little tiny Raspberry Pi Zero because what it does is it makes a web interface to the WinLink network. So you can have another computer on your network, like a tablet or your phone or whatever, and read and compose WinLink messages and have them sent through WinLink. Now, it doesn't support VARA because VARA is only for Windows. The guy who wrote it hasn't released the source code and doesn't, doesn't share. Um, but it does support RDOP, which is really nice. And, um, and I use JS8 column a lot on this because I'm a huge annoying advocate for JS8 call. Um, I think JS8 call is, um, or something like JS8 call was the future for emergency communications. It's a nice weak, weak signal mode and um, will uh, let you send messages in really adverse conditions. It's not very fast, but it doesn't really need to be. Um, I, I was testing this with Bob, uh, used to be the section emergency coordinator, and I sent him the first article of the Constitution, and it took about two minutes, which really isn't bad for if you were going to be sending things in an emergency, like a list of people in a shelter. You know, the first article of the Constitution is, you know, it's a page, you know, full text. And so if it was, it was a list of participants at a shelter, that'd probably go in a minute. Um, it works pretty well. Um, so, and I usually use this box here with the touch screen and a keyboard attached to it to uh, when I'm out doing um, POTA and stuff because it's all in one. I don't have to remember other things other than the keyboard. Um, and it runs off of this tiny little... Um, phone charger that you that you use when your phone is running out of out of battery and you're you need it recharged and it'll run this this little this this one it'll run this pie at full tilt for about three hours which is way long enough to do a poda activation or uh, something and i have an, another one of these bricks that gets it about six hours that uh, charges with the same jack as um, it's from talent cell that charges is with the same jack as the KX three uses um, and most QRP radios use and it charges with 12 volts. So it's very ham radio friendly and it also charges and discharges at the same time. So it will act as a UPS. So if I'm out somewhere, What amps does the Raspberry Pi, John, from John? It's um, at most uh, three amps at five volts, so 15 watts. That's the most it can use, um, which means that it'll run on a battery forever. I mean, almost, well, not, I mean, not literally forever, but if you have a, like a seven amp hour or a 12 amp hour um lithium iron phosphate battery that'll run your raspberry pi for a weekend plus because um it's not going to be running at 15 watts the whole time it's only going to be running at you know, five or six most of the time and this screen that i'm using here only draws about another four watts so this whole setup uses less than 20 watts when it is working as hard as it possibly can. So it, at most it consumes five or four amps at um, five volts. Um, I like to think in watts. Um, and so if you have a, a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, 
um, that's 144 watts, you can figure out how long that would last. I mean, it's a long time when it's at reduced, when it's not working as, as hard as it possibly can. And most of the time it's not, it, um, unless you're decoding, um, WSJTX FT8, um, it'll spend most of its time idle. Um, it also has, um, if you're, uh, so inclined, um, let's, if you, uh, like open source software, um, this is LibreOffice, a full featured office suite comes with it. Um, and you saw how fast it started. It wasn't, it wasn't painfully horrible. I mean, it wasn't as fast as a $2,000 gaming laptop, but it was pretty good. Um, So it, you really can do just about anything with it. And one of the things that's built in as a feature that you can use is um, it will let you remote desktop into it. So you can have a Raspberry Pi just sitting somewhere powered on your network because uh, they have Wi-Fi. Um, and then remote desktop in and get all these features and applications and all of that stuff for um via remote control and so um you can do all of this with just a, a the uh, a very old like chromebook or something like that um uh, one time i was doing a presentation i believe with you guys on jsa call and i freaked my wife out because i was using my computer in the other room to, to run jsa call and she kept hearing the the tuner uh, tune up for different bands as I flipped around and thought that something was falling apart in the kitchen. Cause that's where my, my radio is, is in the kitchen. And so I was in the back bedroom, the other side of the house using a computer, the other, the, on the other side of the house, which is kind of nice to be able to do. And if you have your network set up, right, you can do that from anywhere. You could run um, FT8, while you're at work um, or, you know, you're at a wedding and it's really boring, but you've got your phone, you know, you don't have to do the stereotypical thing and watch a game. You could be making contacts, um, which I'm sure your wife will love. So this is about it before I really get into some heavier dutier things. Um, I know I, I didn't go all the way till eight, but hopefully there are a few questions. If you want to unmute yourself and just yell out or put them in chat, I don't care. Aaron, uh, since no one else is uh, speaking up, uh, this is George Casey one B. Um, is it fair to say that if you want to use, really make use of the Raspberry Pi, that you're going to uh, be using Linux at some point? Well, it, it does use Linux, but there, there's virtually no reason for you to go into the command line and have to type in those archaic, weird commands. That, that, that was my next question. What? Do you have a, a distro that you would recommend for somebody who's just getting started? So I would recommend Buster, which is the one that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has sort of customized for the Raspberry Pi. And it starts up looking just like this screen here. Um, the only thing that a Windows person will be a little hesitant about is that they put the menu on the top of the screen. Um, but you don't need, you know, uh, like if you want to set up, you know, uh, a printer, it's all right here, print settings. Um, <clears throat> you don't really need to go in and delve into the um, to th this thing here, which is the terminal, 
which is the scary thing where you type cryptic commands like I do all day long um, to, to make your computer do things. Um, you don't need to, you don't need to do that at all. Um, and if you ever did need to, um, there are so many tutorials out there that can walk you through it. Um, there's a, a YouTuber, his name is Jason uh, KM4ACK, who has a suite of software that you can download. And he walks you through downloading it that sets up WinLink Pat and will ask you questions like what your rig is and all this stuff and walks you through everything to do it. And you don't have to do any of the figuring out. He's done it all. Um, he's a really nice guy and he has a great YouTube channel, um, KM4ACK. Um, and he's a, a very soothing voice. Um, and if you're a little tired, don't listen to him because he's very relaxing. Um, um, and you asked uh, a question about which version of USB. So the Raspberry Pi 4 has USB 2 and 3 slot, uh, ports. Um, the new 5 that is coming out is all USB-C 3. Point whatever it is that's the really fast one. Um, I don't. I haven't managed to get a, a Raspberry Pi 5 yet because supply chain issues, and I'm not willing to shell out a ton of money for one because people bought them and then um, just resell them on Amazon. They didn't buy them for, to use, um, which I think is kind of a jerky thing to do, but I can't drive to their house and get them. So any other questions? Yeah, Aaron, uh, this is John. Um, a couple of years ago, you had turned me on to the B-Link device. I, I can't remember if there's another name for it. Does that sound familiar? Yes, yes. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here um, for people. Um, um, and these are also single board computers. And if you do a Google search for mini PC, now these will use a little bit more juice than a Raspberry Pi because they have usually Intel CPUs. So here's a B Max one that's a hundred bucks. The advantage of these is that they're Windows-based. So you can actually run Hammer or Deluxe or whatever it is you want on it. So, John, your question was... Yeah, so, the, well, the question was that um, how the Raspberry Pi compares to one of these devices, because I've been using it for being a fairly new ham. I didn't know uh, whether or not it made sense to stick with Linux that I'm actually quite familiar with, but... You know, I, th I thought I kind of had to go to Windows, and so I got one of these devices, and it's worked great. But um, I'm curious how it compares to, say, Raspberry Pi 4, which um, I would be, to be honest, I'd be a lot more comfortable in Linux. And would I would it be an upgrade from a two-year-old, a three-year-old uh, B-Link? So, um, no. Um... It's going to be a little slower, but not so much that you probably really notice. Um, if you're if you're more comfortable with uh, Linux, you probably the happiness from Linux will offset the slowness. Um, the these um, things usually come with eight gigs of RAM, sometimes even more, sometimes twelve and sixteen. Um, if you ever buy one, make sure you get like a modern CPU. Some of them have old Celeron um, ones that will barely um, like boot. They're, they're horrible. Um, and you can spend a lot of money on them. There's $700 ones. Um, the nice thing, though, is most of them come with uh, Windows Pro. So that's kind of a selling point because windows pro is a thousand is a hundred bucks anyway. Um, 
but they're and these uh, PC ones will use a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi. They'll use closer to 40 watts mm. even when idle than the Raspberry Pi, which will use closer to 10 watts when kind of idle. So um, other than power, is there a particular advantage to which power, if you're remote and you're hooking to a you know, a battery brick or something sounds wonderful, but it, it other than power, is there a compelling reason to go with a Pi over a B link? Um, uh, usually they're cheaper and you get all that Linuxy goodness. Um, now if you're, if you're scared of Linux, uh, a Raspberry Pi is actually a great way to get your feet wet. Um, cause here, let me, uh, let me go back here and go to micro center. Um, and let's do a pie and it helps. Let's do the Raspberry Pi. Well, let's see if they have any of the fives. Uh, no. Um, so let's look at a four. So this is with one gig of memory. Um, let's see if they have another one down here that has more. Focus, please. Well, okay. They, this isn't the best place to go. I like Micro Center, but their site, their search engine isn't the most friendly. But so it's thirty four dollars, thirty five dollars, um, and probably you have a micro SD card sitting around. That's the only thing extra that you would need really to make this bootable. Um, you might want a keyboard and mouse, but you probably have a keyboard and mouse laying around somewhere in a junk pile. If not, I, I would guess that me or Larry could go out to our garage and find everybody in Holyoke, a keyboard and mouse. <laughs> um, but you can then start, and get your feet wet on the Raspberry Pi for thirty-five bucks, um, which I think is is a great learning experience. Which is why the Raspberry Pi Foundation was started, was to get kids started with programming, um, so that you could have a classroom full of twenty-dollar computers that um, that kids could program on and do STEM in less privileged areas um so there you go uh and there's one more thing i was going to show you here real quick uh so this and of course it's not working today Uh, let's do. So this is a program called Ham Clock, and um, I'm inspired by Ken's Geocron that's in the, his background. Um, Geocrons are like four grand, or ridiculous. They're four hundred, um, even not four thousand. What? Four hundred, not four thousand. Oh no, I meant the big fancy ones, the 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 ones with the tubes in them, the old uh, the analog ones. Gotcha. And then they have the a four hundred dollar version, which is basically software running on a Raspberry Pi, although they probably didn't use a Raspberry Pi that you plug into your TV, and it's still four hundred dollars, and then you get the nice display. This is open source. It's free. And it will run on any Raspberry Pi out there. The cheapest, cruddiest one with the least amount of memory possible, like the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, is, will run um, 
the uh, ham clock, just perfect. Um, and it displays all your satellite passes and phase of the moons and where the gray line is. This would be a great thing just to experiment. Pick up a Raspberry Pi, spend $40, plug it into your TV, get this going. Because you can do this for 40 bucks or less. The Raspberry Pi Zero is $15. Um, and uh, have a nice looking display in your ham shack for less than the $400 that Geocron would like to sell it to you for. Now, it's not as quite as polished and as perfect, but it's pretty nice. Um, uh, George Collins asks, was it easy to set up FLDG on the Pi? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not any harder than setting it up on Windows. Um, it is it, exactly the same as setting it up on Windows. The, the hardest part is um, plugging in your radio which isn't hard at all. Um, unlike Windows, which you have to probably install the drivers and do all this wacky stuff, uh, it just works. You, you plug in your 7300 and uh, you wait about four seconds and you're done. It's ready to go. You install FL Digi and it, it, it's just like setting FL Digi up on Windows. And if anybody tries and gets stuck, you have my email addresses. Um, I, I would love for you to reach out for me to me and I'll give you some tutorials. And if you want, you can bring your Pi to the next HCRA meeting that I'm at in person and, you know, I'll help you. It's, I'm, I'm a big believer in Linux and thus I'm a big believer in the Raspberry Pi. Any other questions? We got like four minutes before Larry turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, I have a question because you mentioned that Raspberry Pi runs uh, Linux, but you have to install the, the the operating system. It's not that it came with the operating system, right? You have to you have to put it on a um, micro SD card, but um. Let me go back to my browser here. Um, so on the Raspberry Pi homepage, okay. it's step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it on Windows. They have a tool that will just let you do it that you can download for Windows or Mac OS. Um, and, and there you go. And they have every step of the way. And when you download the installer, it gives you a choice of which Raspberry Pi version um, or the, you can install the media player OS or um, anything. And it will walk you through every single step just using this program right here. Oh, it's an image. Um, and, and it's really simple. Anybody can do this. Um, all you need is an SD card. If you have a laptop, an S, a micro SD card, um, fits probably right in your laptop. And it really is very, very simple to to copy the OS onto the micro SD card and then you just slide it into the Raspberry Pi. It only goes in one way. It's really easy. And um, you can install this on a, a, a micro SD card as little as eight gigs of memory. Um, and, and as big as the one, the biggest I've ever done was a 512, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work with a bigger one. And the uh... oh. The Raspberry Pi is able to handle any size of, of SD card or there's a limit? Um, it should be able to handle any size. Um, the micro SD card format has a hard limit itself from the micro SD card specification of four terabytes. But I don't know that there are any four terabyte SD cards available on the market. Yeah. And other question, the... 
I'm on the belief that the Raspberry, the, the Pi on Raspberry Pi means Python. It is that you can program in Python is the preferred software or the preferred You can program language. in Python, but I don't think the Pi means Python. Oh. Because that Maybe Python is spelled with P Y. Oh, okay. It's just I, I heard that. But it's you can program in Python on it if you want to. You can program oh, in yeah. Perl, C, Fortran, COBOL. Oh, okay. Um you said. any language that you want. They're they're all available um for for the Raspberry Pi. I can't think of a single programming language. Even .NET for Windows okay. is available um, on on the Raspberry Pi. I don't know if I locked up or not. No, you're still there. You're good. So in other words, the, in order to use the Raspberry Pi, you need to use uh, the... Okay, I can't the... hear you right now. I seem to have... Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Aaron, but it looks like you're 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 having trouble with your uh, Wi-Fi or your your internet because the uh, the bars keep changing color on your end. So I think your internet is dying. Um, Which right, one? Want to try that again? If, let's see if it is better now. Okay, go ahead. Try it again, Jose. Let me see if I can remember. Okay, the only way to use the the Raspberry Okay, well, Pi I guess I lost everybody. All right, I still hear you, Aaron. Um, hang on, everybody else. Um, Maybe it's me. I'm asking too much. No, no, he should be able to. I can hear you fine, Jose. I think he's right. he's having internet problems. It popped up a few times during his presentation. Here, real low quick. bandwidth. We we can hear you, but we can't see you. And now we see Larry. I believe we lost him. Yeah, I think he, I mean, he's up in the Greenfield area and in the boonies, so I think he's using less than uh, less than our speedy internet down here in the Springfield area. <laughs> oh, wait, let me uh, let me let him back in here. Let's see here. He just or he might have had here. a tree fall down on his wires. You know, could have. Been. Let's see. He he just he just logged back in. Give him a sec here. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see you yet, Aaron. There you go. Okay, you back with us, Aaron? Yes, now everything's working. Apparently, I got a little hick em up in the internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, you, if you don't want me asking anymore, just tell. <laughs> no, go ahead, Josue. No. <laughs> ask, him the, ask him the question. A ask away. Uh, in order to use the Raspberry Pi, you, you need to install the operating system first. There's no way to program or create a software without an operating system. Right, it's, it's a brainless hunk of plastic without the OS. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. For some reason, I'm thinking it's similar to a, to a, a Arduino that you can program, upload the program, and then run. No. It doesn't work that way. No, it's it, it's a computer. It, it's, okay. it's really a computer. The Pi Pico is an Arduino and works that way. But the, um, the real Raspberry Pis, um, no, you have to put the OS on it, just like you have to put Windows on a on a desktop computer or a laptop. Okay, perfect. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Thank you. Uh, well, Todd was talking about building a clock. Uh, are you so inclined to try the ham clock, Todd? You're muted. Yeah. Yes, I am, Larry. Um, I uh, I need to order a Raspberry Pi though, and um, what I'm thinking, I think I'll just order the four. And go from there. Yeah, There's the four is a great computer. The four is a good computer for the yeah. for the ham clock, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, you Perfect. won't have any problems running it. Perfect. And uh, let me put my um, email addresses back up here. Um. So Ranger Friday at Gmail is the one that works best. I respond to that one the fastest. If you have any questions, if any of you have any questions, fire me off an email. I will be happy to answer you. Um, I usually respond to emails within a few hours. Um, so just just ask away. There are no dumb questions. Um, there you go.
I have a question. Is there is there still a Raspberry Pi makerspace in the valley somewhere that you're aware of? Um, I don't believe there is just for Raspberry Pis. There is a a makerspace at UMass that has some Raspberry Pi uh, materials and a couple of 3D printers. Um, and I would I'll pitch the library that at UMass where I work because uh, we have like 50 3D printers. I'm not sure we have any assets or anything for Raspberry Pis, but um, there are some around. There was a banker space in Greenfield that dried up and blew away that it, it wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Um, there is a maker space in Springfield too. Okay. Uh, but I, I don't know what they specialize in. I know there's one at Indian Orchard Mills, but I haven't been there in a couple of years. Um, but well, and if um, Larry ever wants, we can we can do a HCRA makerspace at a meeting. I know he's got his meetings booked out pretty good, but you know I'll show up with a bunch of pies, and if you want to bring a pie, I'll help you install the OS on the SD card, um, and we can just set up a little assembly line to get everybody running. We could, we, oh. if, if there's enough interest, we can do another in person share the knowledge on a Saturday morning. I just have to book a Saturday morning and we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. However, it works good for you. Mm. Um, just don't do it on the same Saturday as the FCARC breakfast because if I don't get my country fried steak once a month, I get cranky. <laughs> good. I like All right. It. Well, if there, again, if there's enough interest, um, we can uh, we can definitely do that. And I guess people will let me know, and or um, you know, uh, uh, Aaron's available if you want uh, in person help. Um, you know, just reach out to him. Yeah, and and if you get stuck on doing this, I will happily connect to you via Zoom, and we can share screens, and I can just walk you through steps to get you going. Um, it's pretty easy to do, and so once you've seen it done the first time, it's it goes real smooth. But I'm willing to just connect to your computer and with Zoom and walk you through. Click this, click that, and you'll be all set. Excellent. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? No. Okay. Everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. We've got another uh, share of the knowledge coming up later in the week. If you haven't signed up for the uh, HCRA Groups.io, please do so, um, and you'll get calendar reminders with uh, with links for all upcoming events as we enter them. And it's a great place to start discussions and gives us much more flexibility than the uh, email uh, reflector, which we've been using for a while, um, which it's time to retire that uh, and all. So uh, last call for questions. If not, Aaron, thank you very much for your, uh, your time tonight. I think everybody found it interesting and people have uh, ideas on possibilities and uh, hopefully you've got at least a few more of us here uh, that will start tinkering with the pie and maybe programming with it. Look forward to it. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Thank you very well. Thank you very much, Ron. Everybody, you. everybody have yeah. a great evening, yeah. and um, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 Take care.